Shelby Bells, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Okay, I know I already posted a video today, you guys, but things have been heating up and um, there have been updates and stuff to this whole situation with Rich Lux and Deaf Noodles. Um, if you're not caught up in this drama, Deaf Noodles has said some really low-key defamatory things about Rich Lux in one of his latest videos and basically calling him like a part of the alt-right community teaming him up with Keemstar of all people and it's in my opinion if you watch my last video on this situation if you haven't watched that yet I'll make sure to link that down below for you so you can check it out but I just think the whole thing is super weird like I've never once thought to categorize Rich Lux and Keemstar in the same sentence as opposed to them both talking about news topics and commentary um but apparently according to Steph Noodles they are one in the same and um it all started with some comments that Ethan Klein made on his channel a couple weeks ago to the LGBTQ community and people were very upset. Rich ended up speaking out about that and kind of saying that what Ethan Klein said was not very okay. And there's been so much drama going on about that. I have so many videos on the topic already. I'm gonna assume you've already caught up on most of that. If you wanna hear the updates on this, Petty Page went on her Twitch and she actually had Rich Lux and Keemstar and what's the guy's name? Papa Gut? Papa Gut? Is that his name? I don't know. Um, on her Twitch stream to talk about all the drama. And you guys, I'm shook. Um, I get, I'm trying to stay calm in this one because like you guys know, I'm friends with Rich. Um, he can defend himself and everything, but I j just the defamatory comments and stuff like that, it makes me want to like stand up and like say something, you know? So I'm going to kind of like give you guys more of my, my feedback on that and also kind of tell you what Petty Page was saying, what Rich said on Page's live stream, what Keem was kind of saying, what Papa Gut was saying, and let's just talk about it all. So if y'all are interested in hearing more about that drama, make sure that you keep on watching. <music> of Deaf Noodles was about three to five days old, right? Um, so by the point that I'd heard about it, people should have heard about it already, right? But since obviously I had a discussion just talking about it, not just on Twitter, but also here on my stream, it's now a thing that everybody's talking about on social media. I originally got sent the footage, because I don't watch Deaf Noodles like that. I originally got sent the footage by Rich Lux directly. As you guys know, Rich Lux is my friend, so therefore I'm just gonna let you know confirmation bias right now. There might be a level of bias in my commentary towards Rich Lux as he is my friend and I do care about him deeply. So with that being said, um, yeah, so he sent me what uh, Deaf Noodles had said, and my friend, not being very um, politics savvy, basically thought that Deaf Noodles was calling him a neo-Nazi, which is f so far from the truth of what actually happened, but he didn't quite understand why he was getting dragged, so I had to kind of somewhat explain that to him. Anyway, since this, Rich Lux has actually posted a video. So this evening, we have Keemstar as well as Rich Lux, who are going to be coming in. Um, Keemstar originally wanted to come onto the show. I was not feeling it. And the only reason I say I was not feeling it, um, isn't because of everybody else because a lot of people were like don't give him a platform <laughs> listen i believe that everybody should have the ability to share space and have a conversation i believe that the only way that we can combat ignorance is by having open and honest discussions with individuals so for those of you who are here and the first thing it is that you're going to say is that he doesn't deserve a platform he has a much bigger platform than me trust me he does not need me in a sense but what i will say is is that rich lux has had some not so great things happen in his past on social media i myself have also had some not so great things it is that i've said and done here on social media and keemstar is also exactly the same nobody is better than anybody and this very moment in time we're just here to have a conversation let's bring you guys a little bit up to speed with what happened with rich lux he posted a video called deaf noodles attacks me and in this video uh he basically spoke about about his thoughts, feelings, and perspectives on everything. So let's take a quick look before we start. Both Rich Lux and Team Star for falling into the alt-right pipeline. And this is not the video that I intended to make today, but I have been getting so many messages on my DMs, my emails from this alt-white community of people. I've been getting messages. Alt-white. 
the moment he started, it was like, with this alt-white community, I'm like, oh, Jesus, this is going to be bad. <laughs> alt-white, I love him. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's so brain dead. It's from you guys saying that Deaf Noodles came for me and saying that I was alt-white alt, 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 alt pipeline or something like that. And I was like, what are you talking? I don't know anything about that. Okay. I don't even know how to spell that, much less know, know what that is. Uh, uh, sponsors of various shows that he decided were too right wing. I want to congratulate both Rachel Lux and Team Star for falling into the alt right pipeline and supplying motherfuckers like Gavin McGinnis and Tim Stoll with the narratives that they want so they can continue to work against progressive causes, which is at the end of the day exactly what Rachel Lux and Team Star wanted, right? But should we really be that surprised? Relation. Our enemies on the far right end up using that to hurt our very causes. The real enemy here are people like Gavin McGinnis, who start hate groups, who are ultra-nationalistic, who believe in racial purity, and are actively working against progressive causes, who actually hate the LGBT community. And what we're doing by literally Dragging Ethan Klein through the coals is giving people like Gavin the fodder. Okay, so the way that I feel about what it is that Deaf Noodles has said, if you aren't aware, is I feel like this is a level of misdirection. What he's trying to do is conflate. It's like very much whataboutism, as in, he may have done this, but what about this guy? This is the enemy. This is the bad guy. The bad guy is always going to be the bad guy. That's not really going to change. To be honest, we should all be holding each other accountable, period. And as far as I'm concerned, his... Uh, bias because of his relationship to Ethan is exactly why he's riding so hard. One of the interesting things about this that was brought up by a commentator called Too Lazy to Try is the fact that Deaf doesn't seem to have anything to gain from speaking so positively about Ethan um, in this moment. He only has more to lose, and apparently his numbers are reflecting that. I did not know that that was the case. I thought that his numbers had always been like that. People are unsubscribing. Um, apparently they all, uh, a bunch of people unsubscribed from the last time it was that he spoke about Ethan Klein in regards to the, you know, top and bottom situation. So all of that was happening, and he basically felt like too lazy to try the um, individual who I'm in here he basically said that like deaf you're losing overall in this your heavy friendship with ethan klein and you wanting to suck that dick so hard you, means that you are ultimately losing so um yeah i don't quite know why he wants to do this or what benefit it has to him besides you know saying hey i'm your friend i'm looking out for you and also like where why is like why is this the topic do you get what i mean like why are we talking about this guy instead of the actual situation that took place and as for him calling ethan klein an ally i was watching uh what's his name tommy some guy called tommy I've forgotten his fucking name Tommy something, he has a live stream. Anyway, I was watching a little bit of his live stream earlier today, and um, he was basically saying that uh, I was like, had some kind of Nazi agenda. I think it might have been jovially. Tommy C, that's it. Um, he said I had some kind of Nazi agenda or something because I believe that people should be active allies. What I mean by that isn't that you need to be doing something, you know, every single day to be an ally. You need to show us all that you are an ally. You need to donate. You need to do this. What I mean is it reflecting positively in the actions it is that you have what it means is is you know actively working to unlearn your biases you know what i mean um a lot of even fans are upset with him at this very moment in time and i feel like maybe that's also a part of the reason why keemstar wants to come on today because i feel like he's aware that there's now like some kind of gap in the market for him to be able to say what it is that he needs to say okay guys so by the way do you like my hair? <laughs> Do you like my hair? I'm literally obsessed with it. This is the first time I think that you guys have seen it blonde and curly, which is, um, I like it. I love the blonde. I think I might go even blonder. If you think I should go even blonder, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know what you think. But so <sighs> this has been so dramatic, you guys. I didn't think just when you think the drama is not hot, girl, something happens. Okay. So a few weeks ago, you guys already know, Ethan Klein said some things about the LGBTQIA community, and um, he was very offensive towards the community. A lot of you guys said that the comments he made were not that bad. A lot of you guys are members of the LGBTQIA plus community and said you were not offended by them. The other side of it is that a lot of people were. And I guess the point that I was trying to make that entire time was that, yes, maybe if you as a person are not personally offended by it and you're a part of that community, it does not mean that everybody wasn't offended. There are a lot of people that were offended by it. There are a lot of people that think that Ethan Klein has crossed the line, that he was disrespectful. And then a lot of people thought that what Dan did, telling all of these paying members, the people that pay to be 
to watch the stream every month to be able to comment and leave their feedback every month a lot of people were very 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 offended that dan told them to stfu and to unsubscribe and so a lot of them have in fact stfu'd and unsubscribed it's I thought that situation was kind of dying down. Um, Ethan Klein's been kind of trolling the entire situation by apologi apologizing for random crap every podcast he does since then. And I was thinking about making a video about that, but then I'll, honestly, I was like, okay, I know you're trolling. Like, who cares? Move on. Like, you clearly don't care that you've been offensive and you clearly haven't learned your lesson. So we're just gonna keep it moving. But um, that was until Deaf Noodles chimed in on this. And Deaf Noodles and Ethan Klein are very close now. Um, Deaf Noodles, if you were not caught up in this, he was the co-host of the Streamy Awards this year. Um, and, you know, even more coincidentally at that point, he ended up winning the award for like the drama channel or whatever um, that Rich was also nominated for. We have not forgotten that. So maybe this is because I don't even know, but, but he ended up winning that. I don't think it was any surprise to anybody that he won considering that he was like co-hosting the show and is like best buds with Ethan right now. I don't really have anything against either of these people, but I don't like this behavior. We all know that Deaf Noodles and Ethan Klein have this huge like beef with Keemstar, okay? And that's no secret. If you keep up with this community at all, Oh my god, I have heartburn on you. Um, then you already know that, right? But the Rich Lux has never been categorized into this kind of a situation, and a lot of people are very thrown off by Death Noodles categorizing him in the same type of situation that they that they do Keemstar. Now, Death Noodles called basically called Keemstar and Rich Lux all part of the alt-right community, which when you look up the alt-right community, you see like synonyms for like homophobia, racism, and sexism, misogynistic. And it's like people who are so okay with being labeled those things that they go out of their way to have those labels put on them. They see, they see these labels of like misogynist, sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic. They see those, those labels as like a badge of honor because it's like they're just <sighs> crappy people. Anyway, um... <laughs> For Rich Lux to be categorized in the same like group as, as those people was literally laughable to me because not only is Rich Lux a part of not one but two marginalized communities being a Latino man and being gay, he's never displayed behavior that's like shows that. Okay, you guys, I know I'm gonna get comments on it. Yeah, he said a couple things in the past that got him into some trouble. He also apologized for those and he kept, and we've kept it moving. Like how, like you can't hold somebody and say they're, they're, they are like a certain thing. They are a racist. They are a thing because they said something one time and they messed up and they apologized for it. If it was something consistent, over the years where they kept on repeating the same behavior and they hadn't learned from it and they hadn't grown, then yeah, okay, like Trisha Paytas, she offends every single community out there, but at the same time, she keeps doing it. She hasn't learned from her mistakes. She keeps offending different communities. So yeah, you can label Trisha Paytas as whatever it is that you want to, a troll, you know, whatever it is you want to, because she doesn't learn from her lessons. She keeps on going. With someone like Rich Lexi, messed up once, he hasn't, he apologized and he hasn't shown that behavior again because he's learned from whatever he said that was wrong. Why do we keep categorizing these people and holding them to something they said years ago? Why do we keep holding that against them if they've shown like a pattern of behavior that's changed? And even, Ke okay, so you guys know on this channel, I am not a really big fan of Keemstar. It's just the truth, okay? Keemstar and I don't view the world the same way, okay? We are not each other's people. He doesn't know who I am, but if he did, he would know that we are not each other's kind of people. And it's just a situation where even in this, this situation, I don't know if I would consider Keemstar even completely alt-right community. Um, I feel like Keemstar definitely lives life on the more controversial side. He's not afraid to go there. And in that way, he views things a lot differently than I do. And so I disagree with a lot of the things he said. I disagree with a lot of things he's done. And 
I don't think I'm, I, I personally, and listen, things could change, but I don't personally see it in the near future for me ever to be on the side of Keemstar for anything, but I don't think he's alt right either. And I'm able to see like that, that balance and that fine line, um, where I just think that Deaf Noodles and Ethan Klein both have, I think that Rich even said this in his video or maybe in the live stream with Petty Page, they, that he has like this hate boner for them. And I just don't get like, it, it's just whatever y'all got going on, you don't need to bring it into every single situation. And that's what they do. And anyway, so Rich went on to Petty Page's Twitch stream. And the Twitch stream was really, really long, you guys. If you have the time, I highly recommend you watching it. We love Paige. Um, I keep calling her Petty Page. She goes by Paige Christie now, sorry. Um, but she, they, Keem, Rich, and Papa Gut, I guess, all went on to Paige's stream. And I was happy to hear that Keem was kind of like defending Rich a little bit and kind of saying that really, honestly, everybody was kind of thinking like, why would you say this about Rich Lux? Like, no, like it's, there's very, very few people comments on my last video, people in Paige's live stream on Twitch, Keem, Paige, Dustin Daly, Papa Gut, all the people that have commented on this, Bo Lynn has made a video on this, all these people that have commented, they all seem to agree on the one thing that Rich Lux doesn't belong in this, in this category with these people. And I honestly, listen, he can defend himself. He does not need me to defend him. He is like very capable of defending himself. He already has, he's already made a video addressing the situation. At the same time, it's just a situation where I feel like, like you're in the wrong De De Dennis, what's his name, Dennis? You're in the wrong Dennis. And I don't think I would, I never thought that I would come out and talk about Dennis like that. Cause he's baby daddy. He's so cute. Love him so much. I think he's so funny. But in this situation, Dennis, you are wrong. And you categorized Rich into this, into this community, into, the, into this very, this community that having that name associated with you is very defamatory. Rich Lux, he does so much for the LGBTQ community here in Houston. And he has since before he was even big on YouTube. Before he was known for drama and all that stuff on YouTube, he was making documentaries trying to highlight the drag community in Houston and the LGBTQ community in Houston. Before he was ever big and making it, you know, with drama and all that. Go back and search the archives on his channel. They're still there. Okay, like he, he gives, he gives a, a voice and a spotlight to all these up and coming drag queens and different members of the LGBTQIA community in Houston by putting them in, in his music videos, by showcasing them on his IG stories and stuff. He'll very oftentimes plug like their businesses or go out to watch their shows and tag them and stuff. And he's so supportive and he's a part of that community. So he's not, that's like the farthest thing from alt-right you could be. It's just, okay, I have a receipt right here. I'm gonna go ahead and read it to you. So. <clears throat> Paige ended up posting a tweet and Paige said, what a shame. Hashtag deaf noodles is such a joke at this point. It's funnier than the comedy he professes to make, but nobody laughs at <laughs> that is, that's harsh. I've laughed at a lot of deaf noodles comedy. I listen, he's baby daddy. Love him so much. Don't like what he did in the situation. And I'm upset about it. Okay. But she said, um, she said, are you not embarrassed? Alt-right pipeline, how do you overspeak a gay man who is offended by something Ethan said about his demographic and then call him out for supplying the alt-right information that Ethan himself put online? Then profess to tell this LGBT member that Ethan is an ally. An ally isn't a descriptive term, it's an actionable term. You have to be active. So please tell me what Ethan is actively doing to be an ally. How is he giving back to the LGBTQIA plus besides humiliating them publicly by feminizing certain aspects of their sexuality? Your fall from grace is the worst I've ever seen. The numbers are cute, but your soul is dead. Such a shame. <sighs> she really read him right there. Um, but that's true. Like you guys, <sighs> I like Ethan Klein overall. Okay. Um, I, oh, it's only recently that I've, watch stuff and seen stuff from him that is questionable and I want to say I don't know his past before frenemies because I didn't follow him so I don't know any of that okay 
But that's kind of true. You can't just say you're an ally. It's an actionable term. Being an ally is speaking up when things are wrong. Being an ally, it, it means a lot more than just saying you're an ally. Okay. And um, Ethan Klein has showed, I think, recently that he's actually anything but an ally. And I think that outside of, he did apologize for what he's, for what he did. But then after he apologized, he went back and mocked the situation for, I think, if not one, two podcasts after that, he mocked the situation by making bogus apologies for stupid stuff after that. And in my opinion, that's mocking the entire situation that happened. And it's mocking the LGBTQIA plus community because you think that your apology isn't something that should be taken seriously, that you're able to mock it and mock and joke about it later. And it's not okay. Um, I think that Ethan has a lot to do to um, kind of win back that community for a lot of people. Now, like I said, a lot of people weren't offended, but then there's a lot that are. And I think the numbers are showing that Ethan Klein and the H3H2 podcast, they are in some in some trouble with this. And apparently Deaf Noodles numbers are dropping too. I'll be honest, I I follow Deaf mainly on Instagram. I watch some of the, some of his videos, but I mainly follow him on Instagram and I'm Facebook and stuff. And, um, but apparently his views are dropping. Apparently he's losing, losing subscribers and he has been for a while. I don't know if this whole thing with Ethan Klein has anything to do with it. I don't know, but it seems like he's in trouble. And it seems like, I don't know if this was an attempt to get people talking about him because he, excuse me, oh my God, I have heartburn. He better than anyone knows that controversy increases your numbers and your views. So was he doing that for that reason? I don't know. Um, but I think that it's very telling that it's been 24 hours at this point, more than that. And he hasn't issued an apology to Rich Lux. He hasn't tweeted anything. He hasn't, um, gone on Instagram and said anything at the time of making this video. I don't know what's going to happen after I'm done filming, but I think it's very telling. And I think he does owe Rich an apology for that because I think it's, it's, it's literally a slanderous defamatory statement that he made. And it's just not flat out, not true. And the vast majority of people online agree. So I don't know. That's just my opinion on that. Um, you guys check out Paige's live stream on this situation. Keemstar was even defending Rich a little bit on this. And so was this Papa gut guy. So like, and they're both pretty problematic. So, and they're both defending Rich Lux. They both said that Jeff was in the wrong for this. So let me know what you guys think about all this, this drama in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, do you think that Rich Lux is these things? I don't know. Let me know. You guys can have your own opinion. Or do you think that he isn't these things? Do you think that Death Noodles was off base with this? Do you think that Death Noodles was trying to make a joke out of it and it just did not hit? Or do you think that he really meant the things? Um, Rich Lux seems to think that Death Noodles actually did mean them because now it's been a full day and he still has not apologized. So he said some pretty harsh words to Death Noodles on Paige's live stream. He said, um, F Death Noodles. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Um, and we'll see if that statement alone makes Def or D Dennis respond. We'll see. But anyway, you guys, let me know what you think about all that drama in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. And that's going to be it for today's video, you guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified of all my future videos when they do post. Remember, all Shelby Bells ring the bell. And if you enjoyed today's video, YouTube should be suggesting a couple more down here for you to choose from. So I'd love it if you did that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.